Sometimes runway incidents are solo affairs, entirely the responsibility of one pilot. Other times, though, a lapse on the part of a second pilot contributes to the danger. Let's look at a couple of examples. It's February 1, 2014, and November 7128 Uniform, along Easy, is inbound for landing at Redmond, Oregon. Redmond Tower, along Easy, 7128 Uniform, nine miles to the southeast, inbound for full stop with Uniform. Long Easy uh, 21 Uniform, enter right downwind, runway 10, report midfield. Shortly thereafter, on the ground, a Cessna Skywagon calls the tower for clearance to depart on runway 10. Well, the tower is Skywagon running 5 Uniform Victor, ready to go 10. Skywagon 5 Uniform Victor at runway 10, cleared for takeoff, left turn out approved. 5 Uniform Victor, cleared for takeoff 10, with a left turn out. Unbeknownst to the tower, however, 7128 Uniform. The long easy has entered the pattern and is now on short final for runway 10, despite having never received a landing clearance. On the ground, Skywagon 5 Uniform Victor is taxiing into position on the runway when a shadow flashes overhead. Long easy at 21 Uniform, you landed without landing clearance. Did not uh, call right downwind. 28 Uniform, sorry, my mistake. Fortunately, there's no collision. The pilot of the Long Easy later reports that he never saw the Cessna on the runway or heard the takeoff clearance. In Skywagon, the five uniform Victor, I never saw the Long Easy. Did he land prior to you taking the runway? He went right over the top of me. His shadow went right over my windshield. It's still February of 2014, but we're now at San Diego's Montgomery Field. November 450 Tango Papa, a Cessna 206 is approaching from the west. Montgomery Tower Station Air 450 Tango Papa is five miles to the west with information Romeo. Station Air 450 Tango Papa, Montgomery Tower, in our left downwind, runway 28 left, and maintain our above 2,000 until advice. This is the pilot's first time landing at Montgomery Field. In fact, he's a student pilot flying his own aircraft. Station Air 0 Tango Papa, descent your discretion, runway 28 left, clear to land. 28 left, uh, clear to land, descent at our discretion, 0 Tango Papa. On the ground, a Cessna 210, November 210 Bravo X-ray, is waiting at the threshold of runway 28 right, the larger of the field's parallel runways. Station Air 210 Bravo X-ray is ready to go 28 right, straight out departure. Station Air 0 Bravo X-ray, Cherokee on the open, OBI right, turn westbound approved, runway 28 right, close takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 28 right. But the takeoff is delayed. The pilot of 210 Bravo X-Ray and the tower controller both see 450 Tango Papa, the Cessna 210 that had been cleared to land on runway 28 left, on final for runway 28 right. 210 Bravo X-Ray holds short. November uh, 0 Tango Papa, verify line up at 28 left. Uh, correction, go around, please go around. Number 0 Tango Papa. Go around 0 Tango Papa. Number 0 Tango Papa, you're given uh, runway 28 left, sir. Make left track going 28 left. At first glance, these two runway incidents are remarkably similar. Both involve aircraft on short final for runways they didn't have permission to land on, and both involve aircraft on the ground being cleared to take off in front of the landing traffic. But there's one critical difference between them. In the first case, the pilot on the ground neglected to visually clear final approach before taxiing onto the runway. He either assumed that, if he had been cleared for takeoff, there couldn't be an aircraft on final, or didn't look closely enough to see the admittedly small long easy. In contrast, the pilot on the ground in the second case looked at the final approach path, saw the approaching traffic, and held his position. Neither pilot on the ground was at fault here. In both cases, the blame lies squarely with the landing pilot. But it was their vigilance, or lack thereof, that made the difference between a minor event and a close call that could easily have ended in tragedy.